You see you, baby. Tough. So let's go over a basic uh, irrigation sprinkler head repair. Uh, right here, as you can see, this one's actually sticking out of the ground, tilted. It ain't gonna do any good like this. This could have been caused by uh, somebody running it over with their bikes, with their cars. Some of the things that we're gonna need in order to repair this is a, is a shovel and, and a little hand shovel. All right, so you wanna make sure that you don't get the pipes. You wanna make sure where the pipes are at. So you wanna dig slowly and gently. Once you get to the pipe, you can use a little hand shovel. After you unbury it, you wanna to touch around the head and look to make sure that there's no leaks going on at the base or at the pipe where it connects. And um, once you see that, we're gonna to get to the next step. We're gonna go ahead and, and start to bury it. Um, we're gonna use a hand shovel at first because we wanna, if you remember, it was tilted. We wanna make sure that it stays straight. We want to keep our hands on on the sprinkler so it will it will not tilt on us when we're trying to rebury it. So now, when we got it pretty firm in there, we want to use our our shovel, get the big stuff in there. As you can see, it's pretty solid in there. We don't have the problem with it tilted anymore. It's gonna to start to um, water what we want it to water. Um, and it's pretty simple. Uh, don't be afraid to do this. It's, it's not very hard at all. And um, that's basically it. All right, well, here's the situation where we have a maintenance issue. Um, as you can see, this is an MP rotator and the way it's supposed to work, it's supposed to rotate and evenly distribute the water. But right now we see a clog going on and you notice in clogs that you no longer get that even application. So now let's go over a way that um, we could fix this, this clog situation. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off the water. We're gonna make sure we hold on to the head because this is a pop-up. The first thing you do is take off the head. And as you can see, there's a, a filter here. You wanna make sure you clean any debris or any type of dirt that's on there, sand. So also in, in a, in a multi-stream spray, what you want to look at is the emitter, so you push down at it and you make sure that there's nothing in there, no rocks, no sand or anything like that. If you could look in there, there's, there's a little piece of rock in there that was making, that was causing all that, the problems. All right, so now after removing that object, the little piece of rock inside the, where the emitters were at and also cleaning the filters, um, we put the head back and as you can see it's applying water much more evenly. We don't have that problem where it's, it's clogged anymore and that's basically it. What we have here is the spray. We were actually working with these earlier in the field um, and we're going to go ahead and take that apart just so you can see what's inside of it. First thing is what you saw in the film earlier is the filter and the, the nozzle. The next thing is inside of it is the spring and then it has a stem, and then the body. Now let's take a look at the various pieces we have here, because in order for us to identify the problem, we need to look at further into the different parts. Um, usually when we have a, clo a clog, we're gonna look at the nozzle, which is usually when it has debris inside of it and the water can't come out. And it's also, with the, it has to do with the filter when it's too clogged, you might wanna clean that out in order for it to flow out correctly. Um, the other thing we look at is the base leak, which underneath of the, the spray, um, you would notice that there's a connection there. And sometimes what happens is that that pipe slips out, usually causing an area of very wet around um, the base or the spray head. The other possibility or the other problem that we run into is the seal leak, which is the top of the spray where the stem comes out. Around that area, 
there's a rubber piece that sometimes wears out and that's where water usually leaks out. Another type of sprinkler head is the rotor and as you can see these take a lot longer to apply water because they're constantly moving and also um, cover bigger, much bigger areas than your typical spray head. The problem with these type of sprinklers is that sometimes they get off track, meaning not watering what they're supposed to be watering. It's important to note that every one of these type of sprinklers has a manufacturer and it's important to know which manufacturer makes it so that way you can look at the manual and you can find out how exactly how um, to adjust the throw and also to adjust the turn on it, making sure it's not hitting anything else that it's not supposed to. All right, so right here we have a, a hairline um, crack in the pipe. Uh, these aren't the easiest repairs to do, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to repair them. Um, most of the time you see the pipe is in the ground. In this case, we have it above the ground. If you have the pipe in the ground, you would notice that you would have a pool of water there. You would have a hole in the ground. We're gonna go ahead and repair this and we're gonna show you how to do that. So the things we're gonna need to repair something like this is we need to know the size of the pipe. In this case, it's a third, three quarters of an inch and that's what we have here. We have some pipe laying here, some spare, and also we need some um, couplings and this is just to fit the pipes together. Um, the other thing that's important is to have is the, the primer and this just helps once we get the glue going, which we need, um, that, that helps the pipe to, to glue itself much better. So it's important to use um, primer, usually have come, the color that you usually see them in is purple. And also lastly, what we need is a poly cutter and this is just to cut our pipes to the right size. In most people's cases, these pipes are underground, so you're going to want to bear, unbury it. So go ahead and put in a little primer on it just to get the pipe a little softer. how easy that was. So once the pipe is cut, we use the coupling, put a little primer on it. In this case, we have a pipe that actually has a fitting on it, um, so we won't need another coupling. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Primer. We went ahead and turned it on and as you can see, there's no leaks going on. Perfect fitting, perfect job. And this is when you would go ahead and go ahead and rebury your pipes because you know there's no leaks. And that's basically it. All set.